cranky iconoclast and modern urban wit, Fran Leibowitz, has made something of a career out of not writing. In 1994, the famously blocked essayist published a children's book, Mr. Chass and Lisa Sue Meet the Pandas, but her last work for adults, Social Studies, came out in 1981. Now Ms. Leibowitz, who refers to herself as the Willie Loman of the airport set, lectures for a living. She joined me recently for a drink and a smoke. <coughs> Is this seat taken? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right for a person of my age. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, you have been uh, um, quoted worrying about a loss of gentility. Well, good manners in society. Do you think uh, manners are, are irretrievable? I mean, in the new in the new millennium, uh, is it increasingly a class thing that uh, will be regarded as old-fashioned and and you know? I don't think you know. I don't actually think manners are regarded as old-fashioned. I think they're regarded as undemocratic. Um, which is much worse because fashion changes um, but unfortunately people's idea of democracy just descends so that now what people think of as democracy really is in my mind just a kind of mob rule. Um, Give me an example. Well we have excessive democracy now you know for instance in certain states in the United States California for instance um, how often we say California for instance um, they're able to vote directly on issues you know um, they have, you know these propositions um, this is too pure democracy. Um, this is, you know, opinion. This is unfiltered through, you know, the legislative process. And so you get these terrible things, like they have the Proposition 187 or whatever, you know, the anti-immigration uh, proposition, anti-tax propositions. Um, and those things are connected in people's minds. In other words, like, just having normally good manners would be considered to be now to be elitist. You know, they're not available to everyone, although they're free. They actually, they are free. They actually doesn't cost you anything to have manners. Um, and you can see how really brutal um, people are when they don't have them. When they don't have two things, when they don't have vocabulary and when they don't have manners. And you see this by watching television talk shows. Everyone screams. They're wearing microphones. They seem not to know that they amplify the human voice. Um, everyone shouts at everyone else and everyone has a vocabulary of 16 words. Um, and for the same price, they could speak in a more melodious voice and have a bigger vocabulary. Um, this uh, single issue, single vote uh, idea of a democracy in the future surely is the next horribly going as our TV sets will be equipped with A and B buttons that we can you know, have our interactive politics with. Isn't that to some degree an improvement on the representative democracy model which is, seems to me increasingly outmoded where you send Mr. Smith to Washington and then only later do you hear he's been up to you know, snorting crack cocaine and, and, uh, and, and getting down when he should be representing us? No, it's worse because it's better for one person to be corrupt than everyone. Then now he can be a representative in corruption. Um, no, because the average person is too average. Well, I mean, maybe you should have to pass an exam on a certain subject to entitle you to vote in a certain way on a certain subject. But you know that's you know? not going to happen. I mean, well, you don't even have to pass an exam to get out of school now. <laughs> you know, the opposite thing is happening. To me, this is the Vox Populi turned up way too loud. You know, I don't want to hear their opinions. They, their opinions are based on nothing. They're not even opinions. They're, they're just simply, they're just prejudices. You know, and as people become less educated, they have more opinions and also more access to our attention. You're such an elitist. Yes. Well, when was the ideal time, do you think, the ideal balance was ever set between uh, the voting, the body of voters and government? I don't know if there was an ideal In time, but I mean... No women weren't even voting. Well, somewhere between those two things. You know, maybe we should try men not voting. I mean, for instance, gun control would really profit by that. Um, I think a lot of things. I think we should try that. That would be the good thing to try next. Gun control? No, men not voting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned news. And, of course, uh, we were talking about news earlier on the program tonight. Um, it seems to me increasingly the language of news, the anchor at his desk with the official picture behind, is being appropriated to sell hair tonic or evangelistic programs where they have the apocalypse news. In Israel this week, uh, tragedy struck once again, and it saith in Ephesians 14.4, the, the, the Lord shall be kind unto thee. And are we losing a sense of what is news and what is not news? We're losing sense, period. And that's one of the senses we're losing. Um, I mean, it really is impossible to be a satirist in this era. You know, there's nothing, you know, it would, it would it, 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 Jonathan Swift would give up. You know, I mean, there, it's true that those infomercials, look, they're made to look like news shows. Things that are ads should look like ads, things that are news should look like news. Um, but now the news is ads and the ads is news and 
um, you know, it's all meshed into one. It's mm -hmm. corrupt. Mm -hmm. so the future now seems so familiar. Everything is discussed in terms of the imminent changes or usually improvements future tech will bring us. Well, that's because there used to be more of a future than there is now. Um, you know, that's what postmodernism is. The future is the past. I mean, there is no future. There's also no notion of progress. There used to be the idea, and perhaps some people still have this idea, although they're not people who are paying attention, um, that things would actually progress in a linear fashion, by which I mean get better and better. Um, and there used to be inventions, um, real inventions that really changed things. Um, now everyone says it's a computer. I would have to take their word for it since I am far more, further removed from the computer than from the steam engine. Um, but it doesn't seem to me um, as big a difference as the difference between, say, horses and cars. Um, that seems like a bigger difference and a bigger invention. Mm -hmm. This seems like a kind of minute invention to me. What troubles me about, about computers um, <clears throat> and the talk all around them is that they're used as a kind of panacea for all present ills. Don't worry about third world famine. Don't worry about right. the disintegrating we'll family. The we'll fix it on the internet, exactly. Yeah. Well, because there's this idea now that if everyone talks to each other, that will solve everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's no different than talk radio, say. You know, um, to me, I mean, I, I probably don't really understand what computers do, but it does seem to me like all they do is dull things fast. You know, they add fast, they subtract fast, they type fast. Who cares? Yeah, my computer is, a, is an SST, a supersonic typewriter, more than anything else. Yes, well, I mean, that's what I see having changed the most, really, is, is prose style. I mean, it had a direct and ill effect on prose style. Computer. What did it do? Um, well, first of all, it, I probably, I think one of the reasons for it is that it types so fast. I mean, that, you know, it also, what people always say is a selling point, what writers always say is, but, you know, you should get one, friend, because then you can, if you want to move something from here to here, you just, you know, press this button. It's ludicrous to me that you could move something from here to here. It's like saying if you want to take the basement out of a house and put it on the roof, then you wouldn't have a house. Um, well, but you're I saying see you write everything in order, exactly as it was intended? Sentences, sure. Of course I do. Um, and even the novel I'm writing. I mean, I might write a little part of it if I know that, you know, where it's going to go, but it, it's small. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, some sort of confetti. You know, although I have read novels that seem to me to be that. And I've certainly read novels that I know would not have been written without a word processor. And I wish they hadn't been. Mm. You know. um, and also, I think it looks so good. I think that's the other thing. You know, I write with a pen, but even when people typed, you know, what TypeScript looked like, you know, you couldn't barely read it. Mm. Um, and so people worked harder at it. Now, it looks like a book. So, you know, they must think, huh, I'm done. <laughs> There's no other explanation for these books, in my opinion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I hate to, to bring this up, uh, but uh, do you think you will have finished your novel by the end of the century? That's my goal. Yes? That is, at, you, you hit, that is my due date in my mind. So you see, you do have a, an artificial time barrier in your mind. Even well, you I mean, are... it's actually, you know, due five years ago, but I've given myself this little extra time. Yes. I hope you do. Thank you. Thank you.